So, um, before we head into today's show, I received some very interesting feedback and news, which I'm not too sure if it's legit or not. I mentioned it um, the other day on the random show when I was streaming, and I thought I'd just mention it on here because this is the best place to sort of talk about this sort of stuff because this is the number one cultural commentary podcast in the world. So, as you guys know, I'm a nightlife aficionado, I'm a nightlife fan, I'm a nightlife freak. I'm a rave addict and I DJ. So I go out a lot. Sometimes I go out probably a little bit too much. Sometimes I probably do a little bit too much. And sometimes I probably say a little bit too much. But it doesn't matter. I flip and love it. I flip and love it. And part of loving it is falling in love with clubs, falling in love with electronic music, one genre in particular being techno. You also got house, you got disco, all that malarkey. Along my journey, I obviously discovered some of the great clubs out there. And one of the best clubs I've discovered over the years has been Berghain. I've loved the place. I've been going there for like, I'm going to say like 10 plus years. It's probably been maybe more than that. But I've been going there for a very, very, very long time. Um, the first time I actually ever went there, I went by myself. So I've had every experience of being there with friends, being there on my own, uh, being there with quote unquote locals. I've done the whole shebang. I've done everything that you can expect when it comes to that place. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. Whatever you're thinking now, yes, I've done it. Okay, cool. So I've enjoyed it and it's been really great. But it's also, I feel like, been an education because it's, it's informed my clubbing behavior and taste across the board. It's kind of had, it's kind of made me appreciate how they do things over there. It's also made me question the wisdom of it. Like, it's, it's good in general, especially when you live in London. We don't really have a door picking, you know, um, culture here at all. Zero. It doesn't really exist. Most clubs let anybody in as long as you got money. Most clubs don't even care if you're drunk or high. They just want your money. So the atmosphere and the vibes in the clubs are a bit weird. So whenever you go to a place like Berlin for the first time or in Amsterdam or whatever, or Madrid, or Barcelona, anywhere that's got like a little bit of a more of a sophisticated club life, and people maybe take the, their jobs in club culture a little bit more seriously, and they're not just a transient kind of like, you know, you know, whatever job, they're kind of like a career thing, which is what they do in Berlin, which is a bit different than other places, it almost makes you appreciate the other side of it. Maybe you won't want to live there, you won't want to copy that in London, whatever it may be, but it just gives you an understanding of like, okay, this is why they do it like that, you see the results of it. You see why they do it when you go inside. You're like, oh shit, look how fun this club is. Look how everyone's so free. Look how everyone's dancing. No one's on their phones. Everyone's in the moment. It makes you appreciate that sort of stuff. So it's all good. So anyway, long story short, obviously I'm a great fan of the club. I love it. I've been there many, many a times. I have aspirations of in the future playing there one day. And I'm pretty sure that will definitely happen. Um, whether it's Panorama Bar or Burkhine, I'm pretty sure that is definitely in my destiny. And it's going to be a monumental moment um, considering the amount of times I've spoken about it. But I've heard allegedly via somebody who left a comment on one of my videos that I've been put on some sort of blacklist at the Burkhine. I've been put on a blacklist where they're essentially trying to dissuade people who make content like I do, centering around nightlife, centering around dance music, centering around techno, centering around, you know, techno tourism, because they don't like the attention that it brings. Maybe I'm assuming, maybe they don't like the things that the people say, maybe they don't like the cut of their jib. I don't know. But in general, the funny thing is, is that they're kind of grouping me in with those TikTok techno influencers you know like that girl that i spoke about um who's german i think as well who everyone was kind of ragging on they kind of group me in that sort of same group of people the ones that everyone gets annoyed by the ones that do the get ready with me as i go to Bergheim, the ones that wear harnesses and pbc and mesh and whatever as like a uniform just so they can go in certain places all those people they're grouping me in with those people so i was dunking on these guys and girls I was dunking on them. I was flexing on them. I was almost acting as if I was cooler than them because I wasn't like them. But then on the other side of things, Bergheim allegedly have decided that I am just as bad as those TikTok influencers, which is hilarious when you think about it. But when I was thinking about it a little bit more, I was thinking to myself, if this is true, it's almost as if they're trying to like silence people from talking about the club. And I find that incredibly weird because I understand how controlling, how controlling and how picky 
good pretentious selective exclusive they are when it comes to how they manage the club because obviously it's worked for so long it's worked so long they know what they're doing right from the bouncers to the people that work there the booking it's fucking kill it they have you know a program that runs what basically 12 months of the year um open you know from friday all the way until monday they have great flipping booking great programming great flipping promoters it's all really done well so they know what they're doing they're not flipping idiots but it's also one of the worst kept secrets in the world. There's a ton of articles written about Bergheim all the time. There's a million videos, many more on YouTube that have many millions more views than I, and plenty of people leaving reviews and stuff on Reddit. Like, there's plenty of places where you can find out and read about Bergheim. So I just find it utterly odd that they would get annoyed by like random YouTubers who are just sharing their experience of going there. And it's not as even like, because I understand there's a there's like a bit of a taboo. There's a bit of a nace. It's a bit. It's a bit. It's looked down upon if you describe in detail what goes on inside, who you see, whatever. I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think I've said, "Oh, I saw a so-and-so celebrity," and I don't think I've gone into excruciating detail about what I what I saw other people doing. Even it's just more so about my experience. Oh, I had a good time. I was dancing until this time. I was tired. This person played amazing. That's just like my experience that I had. But I don't see how much more I could limit without then having the feeling as if like they're controlling what I'm saying. And you never want to get to that point of view. You never want to get to that point where you feel like someone's controlling your speech. Like, what the hell is this? Like, it's not that deep. It's just a fucking nightclub. So if it is true, it's unfortunate because that means more than likely because, you know, I've got a very obvious and um, I've got a very, uh, you know... I've got a very unique face. I've got a very big head. <laughs> so most likely I'm not going to blend in or go incognito in some sort of flipping, you know, disguise. So, you know, if 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 it if it transpires I am actually blacklisted and banned from there and I can't go, I'm probably going to find out this time. Well, I'm probably going to find out next month because I do plan to go over to Berlin next month um, for this particular program they have at the end of the month. They have a bite night um, happening or beta, I guess, happening at the end of the month, um, 24th of May, um, which features people I want to see like Filmmaker, Pablo Buzzi, The Hacker, um, Neuromancer, and then on the following weekend or the following day, so on a Saturday, they have a standard club night happening. And standard club night, who I want to see, Ben Sims, obviously, UK stand up, Bessie Hira, I've always wanted to see because they've been getting rave reviews. I think they've played the Bergheim quite often these last few months. I think so. It feels like they're always there every, every 18 months or so. So I really want to see them play. Obviously, Luke Slater. And then in Panama Bar, you've got Dinky, who I want to see, John Talibot, Mike Starr, and Vlada. So there's a good like lineup for people I want to see. So I'm going to get an accurate idea of if I'm banned or not when I do go into the, the month. But I just find it hilarious. If that's true, I find it absolutely hilarious. Like how much more control do you need? You already control how people, you know, you already control who comes into your club, right? You cover their flipping phones. It's almost like a unwritten rule that you shouldn't talk about what you see on the inside now you want don't want people to talk about it on their own platforms or to make a it's like it's insane it's literally insane if that is the case but maybe this also is part of the reason why it's such a good club maybe this iron grip that they have almost similar to like an iphone right you know like um, apple have the walled garden with the apps they don't really let you do anything on there maybe that's part of why apple have been so successful over the years it's not like a free-for-all you can't just make any app it sort of has to exist within the app store has to pass certain criteria meet certain standards blah 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 so maybe having an iron grip on things is the best way to go about things but i also do like the fact that throughout this time that i've been doing this podcast i always have said that this podcast has always been like a a little bit of weirdly therapy for me because i don't really have a big social group I've never really had that many friends anyway, and I usually keep myself to myself. Um, I found that I was doing a lot of these things, having these weird internal dialogues with myself, and it was a bit worrisome, right? I was having these full-blown conversations with myself about things I was doing. So I thought, you know what, why not turn on the microphone and just talk about it like online? And, you know, most likely you're going to touch and speak to more people online than you would do any time, you know, in your flipping real life. And more likely than not, 
because it's online, you'll probably end up finding loads of other people who are just like me. And I did. Throughout doing this podcast, I found out that I wasn't that special. And there's tons of people out there who also don't have many friends and who usually stay by themselves or go out by themselves or whatever it may be. So there's a little bit of kinship there. But I also have been very staunch, very steadfast in always being a consumer, always being a customer, always being a fan first. I've never done this under the guise of I want to get friendly with people. I've never done this because I want to get invited to be like friends with the people that own Fold or friends with the people that own, but I, I don't give a fuck. I literally talk about these things because I love them as a fan and that's it. I'm happy just keeping my arm's length. I don't want to know anybody. I don't want to be friends with anybody. I don't care. And I think that's been a benefit for me. But it's funny that even though I've gone out of my way not to try to be friends with anybody and just talk about the things I'm talking about, buy my own tickets with my own money and go to the parties like any other normal person would do and not try and be like a media person or make this into like a nightlife report. Like I've not done any of that corny shit. I'm still getting dinged. <laughs> That's the funny thing. I've made it a very, I've made a very deliberate stance to be like on my own do my own thing, but I'm still getting grouped in with influences who everybody seems to hate, which is, I guess, what it is, isn't it? Technically, on paper, because I put content on social media, I have to be grouped in with these people. Do you know what I mean? I can't think I'm better than them. We're all the same. Do you know what I mean? The people who put a phone on the wall and then step back and start doing all those poses, I'm just like them. I just sit in a chair instead, you know? I think I'm better than them because I don't sit on the wall and do all that shit, but I'm still the same. We're the same people. Hence why we're getting treated the same, but yeah, because I'm trying to think of it now. The only time I think I had an attempt at doing the whole friend thing, it didn't end well. And I think that, and and again, that that's something that I've been very conscious of because I know how sensitive I am, and I know I don't really play, you know, industry game, which is which kind of explains why I never really advanced in certain areas that I was trying to go in because I was never really good at playing that sort of game. But the last time I did that was with the DJ um, Law Croft who I was a fan of for a while. And then I think I made a video about something that she posted and then she didn't like it. And then she was like telling me in the comment, in the DMs, kind of like what I should do and what I should say and delete this. I was like, look, go fuck it. Like in my head, I just said to go fuck myself. I didn't say obviously in the text, in the DMs. But I just said like, go fuck yourself. And since then I legitimately have deleted that from my brain. I haven't listened to a single set. Don't give, give a fuck. If she's playing on the lineup, I won't go. And that's not good, obviously. You know what I mean? Because that's what happens when you start talking to people. You start to, you know, take what they say personally so I prefer not to do that I prefer just to be like an outsider I wouldn't want to meet somebody and then they turn out to be a wanker and now all of a sudden all that investment I had as a fan I have to kind of take it away now because I don't like you as a person do you know what I mean and I don't want to do that so hey if that's the case you know what I mean and a man's been banned it is what it is isn't it I'm locked up you know what I mean it is what it is what can you do but I'll guess I'll find out when I go to the end of May and then obviously, if I do get denied and they say no because you're on some list, I'll also make a report about that. So it'll be a report about getting in. It'll be a report about not getting in. And it's all going to be absolutely flipping hilarious either way. And um, yeah, man, it's just a funny state of affairs. What a funny state of affairs because I love the place, but I'm not willing to fucking, you know, suck people's dick to go to a club. It's not that deep. Like I love the place. It's a great club. I would prefer not to be blacklisted, of course. But if I am blacklisted, then so be it. You know what I mean? Like, what can you do? But I'm not, I'm not willing to get down on my knees and suck somebody off just to be able to go to a club. It's not that deep. There's plenty of other places I can go to. Hopefully, I hope. Hope it's not a worldwide ban for all clubs. <laughs> but yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out when I'm there. We'll absolutely find out when I'm there. But funnily enough, actually... I saw this clip that features this DJ called Chloe, who basically speaks about um, Bergheim and how she you know, prepares for her sets and what she likes about it, and specifically about Panorama Bar. And you know what's funny about her comments? You know what's actually funny about this woman's comments about Panorama Bar? This is exactly the reason why I love the place also. She said some very astute things that I kind of went to play here, just to kind of give you an idea on like my mindset when I'm going in those kind of places. But obviously, Chloe's far better. You know, she's amazing, like an absolute legend in the scene. So Chloe has very interesting views about playing in Panorama Bar and why she loves it. So happy. And now in a couple of hours, you will play in Panorama Bar. And I was just asking you, because so many artists say that 
it's very special to them. And as a club goer... By the way, this woman's voice for Playful Mag, why is, why is her voice always, like, hoarse? Is she, like... Does she sing? Is she in a metal band? Does she go to concerts every weekend? Every time I play a clip from Playful Magazine, this woman's voice is always gone. Like, or maybe she's got something wrong with her and I'll take it back, but it's her voice is always gone in some regard. It's super funny. I also think it's an amazing club, but why would you say it's special for you? Yeah, it's very special for me to play uh, at uh, Panorama Bar going Bergam first because, uh, I mean, this place is just amazing because it has its own singularity. The building, of course, is like just a special piece of art, I would say. Like the architecture, it's just amazing. So you would definitely not find another place like this in the world where there's like big parties going on. But also the atmosphere is very special, like the sound system and... Yeah, and I feel that it's very peaceful somehow. And uh, yeah, and, and I have the feeling also by playing uh, four hours is special because you have the time to bring something special, yes. You know, generally when I'm booked in a party, um, like uh, I usually play like for it, like two hours, mm. which is great. And it's um, generally like peak time. But there in Panorama Bar, you never know exactly when it, it's the peak time because I have the feeling it's always the peak time. <laughs> and it starts at midnight the day before, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I kind of like this. Like, we just all express ourselves and with our own uh, identity somehow. And I yeah. like it. I always like to find some nice and share the desk with other artists just before and after, you know, and it's great yeah that's a really good point that she made which i never really thought about which is really different from any other club because it's open from saturday till monday there is no peak or off peak time like even at my lowly level usually you're playing like within like one hour to four hour blocks but they're usually any time between like 9 p.m and 3 a.m and usually you'd say the peak hours are probably between 11 p.m and 1 a.m but Bergheim, because it's open literally from Saturday night all the way to Sunday morning, Sunday mo Sunday night, Monday morning, there is no peak or off-peak time. And people are coming in and out. It's quite a transient place. Um, obviously, the turnover is super high. Rejection rate is super high. Oh, no, turnover is not super high, but you know, well, you know what I mean. Rejection rate is super high. So people are coming in and out all the time. So there is no, like, you know... And whenever you go in there, whenever you enter, you feel like the night is just getting started. But people have been in there probably like 12 hours before you or maybe even more. So it must be a bit of a mind trip as a DJ to go in there, which is probably why people say it's quite hard to play there also, because you can't really play like you would a normal gig. Like, oh, I'm going to play my peak set, because what if the time that you go in there you realize the vibe isn't quite what you brought in your tunes? So you kind of have to bring tunes where you kind of can go on a journey, which is probably why they give each DJ like four hours minimum, from what I could see anyway. On the lineup, everyone kind of gets like four hours. That kind of gives you a good time to sort of like, you know, figure out which direction you want to go in. And you get a chance to like catch people. You can kind of take them on a journey. Okay, cool. First hour is this, second hour is this, third is this, and fourth is this. As opposed to like two hours, someone comes and sees you the last half an hour. And then by the time they're getting into it, you're kind of gone. It doesn't really feel that right way. It doesn't make any sense. So that must be an interesting challenge in itself when you're playing there to have all that stuff going on. But I would say if I had to pick as a room, which, you know, you don't get choices probably, I definitely would prefer to play in Panorama. That room is like super amazing, especially with the blinds, sorry, the windows, everyone dancing on the edges, seeing the back of the of the room as well. It's one, you know, because it's all on one level, seeing all the way to the back of the bar, all the hands, a smoke machine. It just feels like an absolute vibe. So that must be really cool to play there and, you know, have people so close to you have that fucking massive booth with all the metal all around it. It's probably a really good feeling. So big up Chloe for describing that very, very astutely. Big up Chloe for describing that very astutely. Oh, and big up Young Old Vibes all in the street in the chat. <laughs> no, no, no. I promise it had nothing to do with Coke in the bathroom. Definitely not. Um, If it was that, I'll just say, definitely isn't nothing to do with that. I don't know. I think from what I, from what I can surmise from what the person said, it seems that Bergheim just don't like people talking about the club in general especially YouTubers. I think the one who really fucked it up was this one dude, some American guy, like you probably see him on there. I remember his video too. He's got a video where he speaks about like, 
his experience like in detail about like what drugs he did who he was with what pers- what that person did and it's just a bit it was a bit too much it was a bit you know clickbaity whatever it may be so um and i remember reading the comments people were really upset with him as well because of the detail he went into so i think that guy kind of set like a bad precedent i think so but again you know it's his experience he went there like I don't, I don't understand how somebody can kind of tell you how you should talk about something it's fucking insane but whatever it is what it is if Berkine want to ban ban man let them ban man I did nothing wrong I did absolutely everything correct I did nothing wrong I did absolutely everything correct